The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marriage relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 So it's, it's, it's a pleasure for me to be with you this morning because like you, I care and love Pastor Christine, and this is a memorable day that we get to celebrate together. I'm also really happy to be here because I get to be with you again. In a very true sense, you were the first congregation in our synod to open your doors to me. This is where I preached my neutral site sermon and where Good Shepherd Gaithersburg um, and their call committee and I discerned whether we were being called to be church together. <coughs> so this is where I preached and this is where um, we had some more conversation in that back fellowship room, and we decided together that this, that my call was to the shepherd just several years ago. So in a very true sense, you, Prince of Peace, are part of my call story into the synod, where not for this space, I may not be here um, in this capacity, now as your bishop. And so thank you for your hospitality then, and thank you for your hospitality today. This morning, we celebrate the fourth Sunday in Advent, the Sunday where we light the candle of love. When I first saw the text and saw the, that the main character, one of the main characters was Joseph, I thought to myself, all right, I'm gonna dig in, I'm gonna share how I've always, always admired Joseph. I thought, I'm going to share how I don't blame him for wanting to walk away. What Mary was telling him was truly devastating at worst and impossible at best. She's pregnant by the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? The news is so shocking that he can't take it. I, and so I can imagine all the plans he had when the marriage was arranged. Something like all the plans that Pastor Christine had about her ordination. All these plans and all these ideas of what would happen and what day it would happen. In his case, the wedding, the feast, the celebration, the home, the children. And now this. The, the, it, it's such unconscionable news that he decides to leave. And he decides to leave quietly. There are no words. They would all fall short. So he leaves. And the text implies that he went to sleep. Now... How many of you have done this? When life catches you off guard, when you hear something that rattles your core, maybe a diagnosis, maybe an unexpected loss, maybe a heartbreak, maybe global or local news, something that just stirs you up inside and you don't necessarily know what to do and all you want to do is be alone. Maybe you want to process, maybe you just want to avoid, maybe you just want to pretend none of this is really happening. Those times when life is just plain over overwhelming and rather than face the severity of the situation, the pillow starts calling your name. And we think that the only safe space on the planet is under the covers. Does this sound familiar? Anybody? Yeah. Maybe it's just um, maybe it's just me, or maybe it's just 
just all of us who get Joseph at this moment, right? He goes to sleep. He knows. He knows that if he accepts Mary and her child, life is going to be challenging. They may not be accepted in community. He'll always have to defend her honor. They'll be alone to defend themselves. And, and let's not forget, she's pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Who will this child be? What will it be like to raise this child? All the thoughts that could be going through Joseph's mind, Joseph's dreams and his life expectation have been shattered. He's been caught off guard, he's devastated, overwhelmed, and so he called, he answers the call. He answers the pillow's call, right? And goes to the safest place on the planet, under the covers, and he sleeps. Now you may have noticed that the angel does not appear to Joseph as Gabriel appeared to Mary. The angel doesn't surprise him as he goes about his day. Instead, the angel appears just as Joseph believes he's escaped, or at least pressed pause on his present reality. It's as if God says, Joseph, yes, your temporal dreams have been shattered, and you can't even say, I did that. And I get it. I get that you're frustrated. But now I've broken into your actual dreams because I know you want to run the other way. But just as I have chosen Mary, I have chosen you, and I've got you. I promise, I've got you. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She's telling the truth. The child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you, you are to name him Jesus. You're to care for him and love him as your own. I am his father, you will be his dad. And you will do this because he is the one to save people from their sins. He will be Emmanuel, God with us. Now, I was going to share all of these things about Joseph, but the theme of today, the fourth Sunday of Advent, is love. And like every other day in our lives, this text lures us in because we can relate to Joseph, but this text is not about Joseph. It's about a God who loves so extravagantly, whose love is so scandalous and unexpected. It's about a God who looked upon God's own beloved humanity, saw that it was lost, and confirmed they really can't do this on their own. And so God decides, I'm going to have to save them from themselves. And so to this, to do this, this God, Mind you, the God of the universe, creator of all that was and is and is to come, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, this God, our God, our God who is love, chooses to break into history, into the world's darkness, and save it by becoming its infinite light. To do this, this God, our God, our God who loves, who is love, becomes a baby, takes on the skin and the body, takes on humanity, makes God's self vulnerable and fragile and defenseless against our sinful limitations and false assumptions of who God truly is. This God, our God, loves us so fiercely that God took the risk of breaking into our world through an unwed young peasant girl of first century Palestine. God loves us so limitlessly that God took the risk of shattering Joseph's temporal dreams and calling him to be Jesus' temporal dad. God took and consistently takes the risk of loving us all the while knowing that we are fickle, not very reliable, and likely to take God's grace for granted. God loves us so <coughs> recklessly that God takes the risk of becoming our Emmanuel, God with us, in the here and now, whether we acknowledge or love God back or not. Today, we celebrate a love that comes to us in spite of and because of who we are. A love that comes to us when we're devastated, frustrated, and overwhelmed by life itself and its inevitable curveballs. 
We celebrate God's incarnation in the Christ child, in Jesus, the lover of our souls, the one who comes to us when we are most afraid, in denial, depressed, and would rather answer the pillow's call than face the trials ahead. The one who is God with us, even when we feel most alone and are uncertain of what the future may bring, and especially when we're certain that the future will bring with it a unique set of challenges. This one, this Jesus, is the one who will also break into our dreams and into our lives with the promise that we are not alone. Joseph knew the road ahead would be uphill, but God promised to be with him. And the very child he was to accept, was to name, and to love as his own. And so as this season of Advent comes to an end, I invite you to remember and to own deep within your heart that in and out of the Advent or Christmas season, Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, and that our eternal salvation along with the salvation from our daily trials is in Jesus, it's in him, in no one else. When all we want is to retreat, deny, hide, or sleep, Jesus, Emmanuel, God is with us. Pastors and friends, when life is good, and sometimes we forget that we really can't and haven't done life on our own, even then, especially then, Jesus, Emmanuel, God is with us. And when we're thirsty, church, when we're thirsty, seeking wholeness, renewal, restoration, or maybe just a breath of fresh air, again, Jesus, Emmanuel, God is with us. May I pray with you? <clears throat> Dear God, thank you. Thank you for coming to us when we are most afraid. Thank you for coming to us in the darkest seasons of our lives. Thank you for, for taking us out from under the covers. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us when we often maybe struggle to love ourselves, to love our neighbors, to love life. Thank you. Thank you for being love, for being the one who rescues us from ourselves, saves us from ourselves, and is always with us and promises never, never to leave us. Dear God, during this season that may be difficult for many, we ask that you walk with us, that you embrace us, and that you remind us. Remind us that you are Emmanuel. And no matter what happens in our life, nothing can separate us from you because you are Emmanuel. You are God with us. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray.